بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد حياكم الله جميعا وجزاكم الله خيرا الحمد لله we will continue with the discussion that we have in relation to the book of Sheikh and Sheikh Rabi' Ibn Hadi Madkhali, Manhaj al Anbiya, the Maftari of the Prophet, in calling to Allah. And previously, the Sheikh he mentioned that it's become clear to, the, to groups from the Muslims that the state of the Muslims, the state of the Muslims, the state of the Ummah, is in dire need of rectification. Is in dire need of rectification. And the Sheikh identified three groups, three specific groups that have also recognized this affair and have gone about rectifying it in different ways. And what were the three groups, Sheikh? What was the first group that the Sheikh mentioned? Ahl Sunnah al Jama'ah. And how do they go about rectifying? According to Tawheed, establishing da'wah and establishing the call and they're seeking to rectify by way of the manhaj of the anbiya, by way of the methodology of the prophets, they seek to rectify the affair of the ummah. Naam. And what was uh, the criticism of this group, if any? Naam. That with the fact that they have the haq, their possession of the truth, they should be more active. Naam. They should be more striving in calling to that haq and establishing the haq. Naam. The second group. Naam. Those that sought to rectify, however, they had tendencies which leaned towards Sufia. Now, nah, lean towards Sufia, and this, no doubt, had overcome the Aqidah and had corrupted the Aqidah as well. Naam. And then the third group. Naam. The group that had efforts, rectification, however, there was a lot of emphasis placed upon siyasa, a lot of emphasis placed upon politics. And that's where we leave it. And that's where we continue from here, inshallah ta'ala. And the shaykh, he goes on to say, فَمِنْ كِبَارِ الْقَالَةِ حَادِ اتِّجَاهِ أَبُوْ عَالَى الْمَوْضُودِ وَلَيْهِ مَعَاقِفْ شَدِيدَ لَا يَجُوْزِ الْمُسْلِمْ يَخْشَى اللَّهُ وَيَجَلَّ الْإِسْلَامِ الَّذِي رَبَّى بِعَتْبَائِهِ and تقديس أشخاص وأفكار أن يسكت أنها. And so the Sheikh now, he's identifying an individual that is from this orientation. Um, and he mentions, Allah, <coughs> and from the greater members and from the leaders of this particular orientation is Abu A'la al Maududi. And there are specific and severe Naam, specific and severe criticism of him and it's not permissible for the Muslim that fears Allah, has respect for Islam, Naam, that they remain silent upon this affair and remain silent upon these ma'akhid, the criticisms of this man, the criticism of the man that is upon the specific ittijahat or is with the specific orientation. فَمَنْ تَكَلَّمْ الْمُعَاخِذْ أَوَّلًا أَنَّهُ لَمْ يَنْطَلِقْ بِدَعْوَتِهِ مِنْ حَيْفْ انْطَلَقَ الْعَنْبِيَاءَ عَلَيْهِمْ صلاة وسلام في دعوة إلى التوحيد وإخلاص العباد لله ومحاربة الشرك ومظاهر ومع أن البلاد التي نشأ فيها أشد البلدان الله حاجة إلى الدعوة الأنبياء ودعاوي فيها أوفر فهي بلاد الأريقة وفي الأوثنية تعبد فيها الأوثان وأبقار أحجار والقروض والفروج ففيها أحاط الأنواع الوثنيات وأقبحها وأشنعها And so the Sheikh goes on to say that from the criticism against this man Maududi, is that he did not begin his da'wah in the same way 
that the Anbiya began their da'wah. By way of his, by way of their call to tawheed and ikhlas, and ikhlas and ibadah for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and waging war against shirk. Naam. Even though the land in which he was raised, Naam, was in great need to the Da'a of the Anbiya, great need of the Da'a of the Anbiya. Because it's a land that was full of idol worship. A land where you find people worship idols, cows, stones, worship even the private parts. And so you find many different forms of idol worship. And those ugly and disfigured and evil forms of idol worship. Well, Muslimun fi had al barad illa kalim in abad in naz and faham al Islam with Tawheed wa aqaidim. Wa mutaafil illa had al baid bi aqaid al jirani him al wathaniin. Wa kem yara al rai mu'abad al wathaniin. Wa wathaniin. Fa yara makabilhu. مشهدا للمسلمين فيه قبر مشيد مكلل بالسهور بالزهور ويتصاعد فيه بخور فيلبس بالحرير والمسلمون آكفون حوله في الغاية من خشوع والخضوع والإجلال واعتقادهم في أولياء أنهم يعملون أو أنهم يعلمون الغيب ويتصرفون في القول نعم فهل ترى بلدا في أرض الله في غاب التاريخ وحادره لا ولاحق الأشد الحاجة إلى التوحيد إلى دعوة التوحيد من هذا البلد أسوأ الشيخ يمنشنز أسوأ المسلمين في هذا البلد except for a few of them or from the people that are furthest away from the understanding of Islam and Tawheed, yani from the correct understanding of Islam and Tawheed. And the Qa'id, the creed, their creed is a creed which, which has been affected by their neighbors, affected by their neighbors, the Wathiniyin, the idol worshippers. And how many times will a person see? The place of worship of the Wathinin. The place of worship Naam of the Wathinin of the idol worshippers. And then see opposite it. Naam a shrine that the Muslims have placed. Within that shrine is an enshrined grave or tomb. That is full and is covered by flowers, and steam comes from it, and is draped with silk. And the Muslims, they revere it and stay by it, and they gather around this this tomb with an absolute khushur. They have khushur whilst doing so. And they have humility whilst doing so. Raising it and regarding it as it, be, as it being something which is majestic. Holding the belief that this is the grave of the awliya, the grave of their saints. And that they, they hold the belief in, in relation to these saints that these saints are or have full knowledge of the ghaib. They have knowledge of the unseen. And they are able to change the affairs of the creation. And so the Shaykh he mentions, do you see a ballad, a, a nation, or a place upon the, the earth, the land of Allah Ta'ala, 
before in tarikh, previously, now previously in history, and in our current time, in this current day, more in need of the call to Tawheed. You see a land that is more in need than this land to the call of Tawheed. Now, so my next question, I'd like to ask, what is the land is the Sheikh referring to? India. Naam, referring to India. Because the Sheikh is mentioning here that the Muslims have been affected by their neighbours. Naam, being affected by their neighbours and the etiqad, the creed of their neighbours. Literally meaning not, not in a neighbouring country, but their neighbours, i.e. the people that live amongst them. And who are those that live in amongst them? Hindus. Naam. The, the same area, Indian, the whole Indian Peninsula now. So they're all affected by this affair. Now, so this is after what you get Allah Allah Alam when exactly but this I believe it was after now. He mentioned he mentioned this after the um, the spirit the spirit of the, the, the nations. Allah Alam, but I believe from the Indian side now. Now and so he's mentioned that they have been affected by Mother, their neighbours, the etiquad of their neighbours, the, the, the belief of the mushrikeen around them, to the extent that you see the ma'bad, you see the, 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 the temple of the mushrikeen, and then you see the shrine for those that make intisab to Islam, those that ascribe to Islam, those are the Muslims. So then there's a... There's a at this point now, you cannot see any real tamiz between the Muslims and the Mushrik. Naam. And so the Sheikh is mentioning that the fact that he began his da'wah, or his da'wah began in a manner which is not the same as that of the, of, as the Anbiya. He began his da'wah in a manner which opposed the da'wah of the Anbiya. Then this is even stranger due to the fact that he lives in a land that is in need of it more than anyone else. Lives in a land where the Muslims are far removed from the correct creed of Islam. Now, Thanian, secondly, اهتم بجانب السياسي فأخذ من دعوته مساحة كبيرة وحجما أكبر من حجم الذي أعطاه الإسلام لهذا الجانب وفهم علماء سلف هذه الأمة من محدثين والفقهاء ومفسرين وجعل نفسه لأتبائه غاية لم يرسمها الله لرسله ولا كلفهم وأتباعهم بها لأنها فوق طاقة البشرية نعم and so نعم and so he mentions that he gave موضودي he gave importance to the affair of siyasa. Naam. Or siyasat. Naam gave importance to the affair of politics. And he, he took a large portion of his call to the affair of politics. More so than what has been established and what Islam had apportioned to its affair politics. And due to this, Naam, and more so than that which is understood by the ulama of the Salaf, of this Ummah, from the muhaddithin, and the fuqaha and the mufassirin. Muhaddithin, the scholars of what? Hadith. Fuqaha, scholars of fiqh, and the mufassirin, scholars of tafsir. Now, each and every one of them did not give such a large portion in the da'wah and in their call to siyasa, to politics. Now, and he gave the absolute 
to himself and as well his followers gave an absolute focus upon this affair in a manner that was, had not been done and prescribed by Allah or his messengers and they had not been burdened with such a thing why? because this was more so over and beyond the ability of Bashri of mankind يقول موضوري معبرا عن هذا الغاية عن هذه الغاية. So موضوري mentions was expressing نعم this this goal. لعله قد تبين لكم بكتاباتنا ورسائلنا أن غايتنا نهائية التي نقصدها من وراء ما نحن بصدد العام الكفاح. إنما هي إهداف الانكلاف القيادة وعاني بذلك أن ما نبتغي الوصول إلى الظفر به في هذه الدنيا أن نطحر الأرض من أدناس قيادة الفسقة فجرة والسيادة ونقيم فيها نظام الإمام الصالح الراشدة فهذا السعي وكفح وتواصل نراه أكبر وأنجح وصيلة موصولة إلى نيل الرضا الرب تعالى وابتغاء وجهه وابتغاء وابتغاء وجهه العلا في الدنيا والآخرة. so this is the كلام مضوي. نعم. the sheikh is quoting. sheikh ربيع is quoting. and he said we believe and we hope that by way of our writing our books. And our treatises, the the red list that we've written, that our actual and final goal, our ultimate goal, that we intend by way of all of this writing, now it it is to bring about revolutions, to overthrow leaderships. And I mean by that, that this is a means of us attaining success in the dunya and to remove or to purify the earth from the filth of evil leadership, corrupt leadership, evil leadership, and to establish by way of that, an upright and rectified imam leadership. And so this is the means and this is what we intend by way of this. And we believe that this is the greatest and the most successful means that will aid us in attaining the pleasure of, of, of the Lord Ta'ala and seeking his face, the most high in the dunya and the akhir. Naam, so from his kalam, he's mentioning that seeking leadership, attaining leadership, overthrowing governments, attaining success where? In the dunya. Naam, by way of Naam, by way of gaining rulership, attaining success in the dunya is a means Naam, of attaining success in the akhirah and the pleasure of the Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. Naam, this is the kalam of Mawludi. As of Shaykh Rabi'i mentions, Hafizahullah, لَعَلَّ الْقَارِعَ الْكَرِيمِ فَتَنْ الْذَكِي الَّذِي يَحْفَرُ الْقُرْآنِ وَيَتْلُوهُ أناع الليل وأطراف النهار ويتدبر دعوات الرسل من أولهم إلى آخرهم لا يعرف أن هذه الغاية أن هذه الغاية الأنبياء التي كافحوا من أجلها ولا يفهم أن هذا السعي وكفاح أكبر وأنجح وسيلة موصولة إلى مرضات المرضات لا ابتغاء وجهها بل أكبر وأنجح وسيلة إلى النيل الرضا الرب هو اتباع المنهج الأنبياء في دعوتهم وترسم خطاهم 
في تطهير الأرض من فساد والشرك وأكبر وسيلة الإيمان بأركانه المعروفة والإسلام بأركانه معروفة أيضا نعم so the Sheikh he mentions that it's hoped and perhaps نعم it's hoped that the noble reader the one that comes across this speech the speech of Maududi that is fatan نعم that is aware and intelligent that has memorized from the Quran and recites it in the night نعم at the end of the days and he نعم he contemplates upon the da'wah the call of the anbiya call of the messengers from the first of them to the last of them Naam, he knows that this is not the ghaya, this was not the goal of any of the anbiya. Naam, this is not what they struggled for in their da'wah. Naam, and it, not, and it does not hold that the greatest goal, the greatest need, and the most successful means of attaining and reaching the pleasure of Allah, tabarakhu ta'ala, and seeking his face is this thing, that thing that's mentioned by Maududi. Naam. Rather, the greatest and the most successful means in attaining the pleasure of the Lord, it is following the manhaj of the Anbiya in their da'wah. It's following the methodology of the prophets in their da'wah. The way that they have led and mapped out as a means of purifying the earth from the corruption of Tawheed, from the corruption of Shirk Bel. And the greatest means is Iman, having faith. Naam, as well as its well known pillars. And Islam, along with its well known pillars as well. So, this is the kalam of the Sheikh. It's the kalam of Sheikh Rabia in relation to that which Mawdoori has put forth. Allah. Naam. And what does this relate to as well? When we're looking at the da'wah of the Anbiya and no doubt all of the, all of the, the Anbiya have opposed this, this affair that Mawdoori has brought forth. Naam. About overthrowing rulers, this is what's going to bring about success. This is what's going to bring about the pleasure of Allah. And this is what's going to bring about seeking the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Naam. Know that all of them oppose this. But which ones, which who from the Anbiya did we mention specifically though, as well, in relation to this affair? Musa, Naam, alayhi salam, and Yusuf. Why? Naam, but also, though. Why, why, what, what was, what did you mention about Yusuf, alayhi salam? Mm. No, the oppression. No. No. He addressed it, but more so now the fact that there was corruption at that time. From the corruption was the corruption of shirk. From the corruption was all was the corruption of rulership, Naam, leadership, Naam. and then he felt. Fell to that, fell victim to that, to that corruption. However, when he began his call in the prison, it wasn't a call of revolution, overthrowing. No, he began with Tawheed. He began with Tawheed. Likewise, Musa, alayhi salam. No, again, rather he was raised within the place, no, within the home of the ruler. No. Where they had removed him. No, they didn't return. Yeah, so that if once he had gone, they could have now would have gone back. No, they didn't return. Now I'm sorry. So this affair of the Ambiya facing. Naam, facing rulers that were corrupt, rulers that brought about great harms for the people that they're ruling over. However, we didn't find the MBI saying that this the greatest way that we can rectify these harms is to overthrow this government or overthrow this person, overthrow that. No. 
Because what's left, it leaves a vacuum after that. If you do, if you succeed, my friend, you succeed, you leave that, you left a vacuum. Now, and but the but the akida had not been rectified. So everyone upon their corrupt belief is going to seek to, is going to seek to fill that vacuum, that corrupt belief. Now, so this is what the sheikh is is referring to specifically that by way of the rectification. Rectification comes about by way of Iman and Islam. Iman and Islam. And the Sheikh also says that the greatest means is Iman. What do you mean by that? The greatest means, the greatest means of rectification. Rectification. Is to have faith, yeah. The greatest means of rectification is by way of Iman and Islam. Not politics. I is opposed to politics, is what he is what Maldi is mentioning. He's mentioned that we need to bring about politics and overall governments. No? So you're talking about overthrowing governments by way of policy. Now, by way of having better policies, my friend. And this is what's going to bring about rectification. Because the policies are not helping the Muslims at the moment. So we need to bring about new policies. Now, and the, the Sheikh is mentioning, no, it's not about policy. It's about Iman, your faith. It's about Islam, acting upon the Arkhan of Islam, Arkhan of Iman. Now, and the Sheikh has mentioned them together. Now, mentioned them together. Nam, which, which indicates as well, because as, as is well known, uh, Iman and Islam is a shtama'a, iftaraka, iftaraka shtama'a. Nam, Iman and Islam, if they're mentioned together, then they have carried different meanings. If they're mentioned separately, then they carry the same meaning. Nam, so when mentioned here, Iman and Islam are mentioned, what, together or separately? Here. Together. Naam. So the Sheikh is referring to the affair of rectification coming about by, by way of Iman. So he's referring to what? Six the six pillars. Naam, the itiqad, the belief that a person has. Whilst then referring to Islam, referring to Arkhan Islam, the amal, the actions. So it's not sufficient for a person to merely just believe. Naam. They have to believe and have the actions of the Muslimin as well. Rectification is referring to Hafidahullah is with the Iman, the creed, as well as the action upon that creed. So the Iman, the Arkan of Iman, as well as Islam, the Arkan of Islam, the pillars of Islam, acting upon that Iman, acting upon what they believe. Now, all these things have to come together, man. But he's mentioned them separately, so it's clear that both things are needed. Both affairs are needed. Allah Ta'ala knows best. Nam, the kind of modu di ala im elm tam, bima alay ahl al hind, min jahal al islam, wa mahum fi him in bid al wadalalat, wa la mahaf the tam, and a fi him bakaya min mutakidat, wa akhlaq, wa takhali min min, the anati him as sabaka, who got the haddaf and hada, fi kitabihi, al waka al muslimi, wa sibili no hood be him. بعد أن تحدث عن تقصير الحكام وتقاعسهم عن تربية الداخلين في الإسلام تربية إسلامية وعن المآحد التي كانت تقام للتعليم لا يستفيد فيها إلا طبقات العليا الوسط الوسطى نعم as a mawdudi also mentions now mawdudi is also has a complete understanding نعم has a complete understanding of the hal, the condition of Ahlul Hind. Now, so confirming here, there's people of India. Now, from by way of their jahl, by way of their jahl, their ignorance of Islam. And what they have from bid'ah, what they have from innovations and misguidance. And upon a clear, he has a clear understanding. Now, a clear and full knowledge that amongst them and within them is the remnants of their previous itikadat, the previous religions, remnants of their previous religions, and their previous now mannerisms, and their previous customs. Now, all of this, they had, they had, they still had some remnants of the creed, some remnants of the mannerisms, some remnants of the customs from the previous religions. Naam. And the first previous religions meaning what? Hinduism. Hinduism. What else? 
Buddhism and Sikhism are found. Now, all of these affairs are containing what? Shirk. Now, all these affairs are containing shirk. So, he can't, when he's writing, he can't feign jahl in this affair. He can't feign ignorance. And he's well aware that the people of India, now, are in need of tawheed. He's well aware that the people of India have been affected by the belief of Buddhism, the beliefs of Hinduism, and the beliefs of Sikhism. Now, because these were the religions, even though they, alhamdulillah, they ascribed to Islam now, these were the previous religions that they were ascribing to. Now, and even some of our brothers, from the Muslims, now, some of them are able to trace their lineage back to their forefathers, and then some of them were Sikh, or some of them were Hindus. Now, I'm making it even clearer that the previous religions that they were upon were not the religions of, of Islam. However, some of the previous practices and customs still remain with, with the people today in that land. Now, now, and he speaks about this. He speaks about this in his book, The Condition of the Muslims and the Means of Their Revival. And so after he speaks about the shortcomings of the rulers, Naam, and their cultivation within Islam and the Islamic cultivation, and at the institutes that have been established for teaching, they cannot be benefit, the people cannot benefit from them, except for if they are upon a high level or a middle level. This is, this is his speech. Naam, قال, he says, وَمَا زَالْ دُحَمَا فِي الْجَهَلْ تَامْ بِتَعَلِيمِ الْإِسْلَامِ مَحْرُومِينَ مِنْ آثَارِهِمَ الْإِسْلَاحِيَةِ إِلَى حَدِّ الْعَظِيمِ وَقَدْ سَبَبْ كُلُّ ذَلِكَ أَنْ كَانَ النَّاسِ مِنْ غَيْرِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ يَدْخُلُونَ فِي الدِّينِ لَا شُعُوبًا وَقَبَائِلٌ إِلَّا أَنَّ كَثِيرًا مِنْ الرُّسُومِ الْبَاطِلَةِ وَأَعْدَادِ الْجَاهِلِيَّةِ مِمَّا كَانُوا عَلَيْهِ مِنْ قَبْلِ الْإِسْلَامِهِمْ لَا تَزَالْ مُتَفَشِّيَةً فِيهِمْ إِلَى يَوْمِنَا هَذَا بَلْ لَمْ تَتَغَيَّرْ أَفْقَارِهِمْ وَمَتَّقِدَاتِهِمْ تَغَيَّرًا تَامًا وَلَا يَزَالْ يُوجِدْ فِيهِمْ إِلَى الْآن كَثِيرٍ مِنْ أَقَائِدِ الْمُشْرِكِينَ وَأَوْحَاهُمْ وَأَوْحَامِهِمْ الَّتِي وَرَفُوهَا عَنْ أَدْيَانِ آبَائِهِمْ الْكَافِرِينَ وَأَقْسَى مَا حَدَفْ فِيهِمْ مِنَ الْفَرْقِ بَعْدَ الْإِسْلَامِهِمْ آلهت لهم جديدة وكأن الآلهة التي كانوا يعبدونها من قبل واختاروا لأعمالهم الوثنية القديمة أسماء جديدة من مصطلحات الإسلامية وكأن العمل على ما كان عليه من قبل وإنما تغير, تغير قشروه ولونوه الظاهري فإن أردتم الشاهد على ما أقول فصرحوا النظر فيما عليه حالة الناس الدينية في بقاء من بقاء بلادهم ثم ارجعوا إلى تاريخ وابحثوا إن الدين الذي كان الناس يدينونه في هذه البقاء نعم قبل أن يأتي الإسلام فستعلمون أنه توجد هناك كثير من القائد وأعمال التي تشبه قائد الدين المنقو المنقرض وأعماله إلا أنه في شكل آخر ولون غير لونه غير لونه نعم and so he he begins with the speech that these people do not cease to be in a state of ignorance about the teachings of Islam prevented from the different means of rectification. Naam, and the reason for this, Naam, the reason for this, for all of this, that the people from other, other than Muslims, now other than Muslims, 
entered in to the region of Allah نعم, by way of large amounts and tribes. Nam, whilst a lot of them had, had practices which were false. And customs which were the customs of Jahiliyyah, which were the customs of before Islam. And these customs did not cease to be amongst them to this day. Rather, they did not change their thinking and their creeds with a full and frank changing of that affair. <coughs> and it does not cease to be amongst them to this day. Many that have this aqaid, many that have this creed of the, of the mushrikeen and these misunderstandings, misconceptions of the mushrikeen that they've inherited from the region of their forefathers who were kafiri and that the least that has occurred amongst them is the difference between their Islam which they left from the history of the Muslims and they take aliha, they take new deities. However, these new deities, it seems as though these new deities are the same as the old. Now, the same as the old deities. Why? Because they, they, they've chosen the same actions for these deities. I did the shirk for them. Now, however, they've given them new names. And with Islamic terminologies. And it's as if the action is the same action of that which has occurred before. And rather, they have just changed its appearance. And if you wanted that, to witness and proof of this, then look directly. Oh, Naam, directly at the condition of the people and the, the condition, or the religious condition of the people in the different places in your land. Then go back to tarikh, go back to history. Naam, and look at the deen, the religion that the people were adhering to at this place, in this land before Islam came to them. And then you will see that there are many, many remnants from the creed and the actions that are found within this belief and derived from, this, from these actions. Even though that there may be a difference in its appearance or it carries a different colouring. So all this, is, all this is from the kalam of whom? Maududi. Now, showing that what? <coughs> He's aware. He recognizes. He recognizes the hal of the people. Not only does he recognize the hal of the people, he recognizes the usul, where the shirk has come from. Now, he recognizes that they're the, the upon shirk, they're upon dalala, and he recognizes where it's come from as well. Now, فبقاء البقاء التي كانت فيها الديانة البوذية قبل الإسلام مثلا كان الناس يعبدون فيها آثار بوذا فهنا سن من أسنان وهناك عظم من عظام وثم شيء آخر من أشيائه يعبدوه الناس ويتبركون به وإنكم لتجدون اليوم أن الناس في هذه البقاء يعاملون مثل هذه معاملة شعرا من أشعار النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أو أثرا من آثار قدمه أو يتبركون بآثاره بآثار بعض الصالحي المسلمين وعابديهم وكذلك إذا استعرض استعرضتم كثيرا من الرسوم والأعداد متفشية اليوم ببعض القبائل متوغلة في إسلامها ثم نظرتم ما ما يروج في بطون غير مسلم في بطون غير مسلم لهذا القبائل نفسها 
من رسوم وتقاليد فقليلا ما تجدون فارقا بين هذه وتلك أفليس ذلك مما يشهد الشهادة الناطقة بأن الذين كان يم نعم بيدهم زمام الأمر المسلمين وشؤونهم واجتماع اجتماعية في القرون الساف السالفة قصروا في أداء واجبهم أيما تقصير إذ لم يمدوا يد التعاون المساعدة إلى الذين بذلوا جهودهم في نشر الإسلام بجهودهم الف الفردية نعم انتهى كلامه and so this is the end of his the, the, come to the end of his speech where he mentions so if you, so he mentioned previously that you look at a place and you look at the history of that place before Islam came there and then you see the effects of that particular belief Naam. so he says for example you look at a place that before within it was the um, Naam, was the religion of Budhiya Naam, Budhiya referring to what? Buddhism, naam, religion of Budhiya, before Islam, for example. And so, you find that the people will worship the relics of Buddha. So here you find one person worshipping the tooth from his teeth, or the bone from his bones. Or here other things that they'll worship. And seek baraka, seek blessings with these things. And then you find today that the people in the same place now do the same actions and have the same actions of tabarruk, seeking baraka, with what they believe to be the hair of the Messenger of Allah, the Prophet, or something from his relics. Or from his, or something from rather his footsteps, and seek baraka with some of the righteous from the Muslimin, some regard as being righteous from the Muslimin, and those that are regarded as being abidin, and those that are regarded as being worshippers. Naam. So if a person was to present and present many of the actions and the adad, the customs of these people that are found and they were to compare, compare it with the actions of those Qabai, these groups and tribes that have had this affair affected within their Islam. And then they were to look, that which, look at that which is found deep inside those groups that are not from the Muslims you'll find the same actions. You'll find the same customs. And you'll find that is very little that is, that separates the two. Very, very little separates the two. Now, And so, is, is this not the case? That the one that witnesses such a thing Naam, and he claims to have, but his hand, by way of his hand, he has authority over the Muslims and over the <coughs> affairs of the Muslims, the social affairs of the Muslims, from the previous generations. It's not the case that they have fallen short in performing Naam, their obligation. Completely full and short. For indeed, they have not approached with cooperation and aid to those that have sought and strive in the spread of Islam. And this is his speech. Naam. So he mentions the hal. Which is the hal of the of the Muslims or all these lands, now that they've been affected by those that have come before them. Now they've been affected by those that have come before them, the nations that have come before them. Now they've been affected 
by their forefathers in terms of their bid'ah and innovation and their shirk. And that you can find direct correlation between this and this. So he recognizes, not only does he recognize the shirk and the bid'ah and the, and the dalal, the, the um, misguidance, not only can he recognize all of that and it's, and it's something that he's illustrated, not only does he recognize the affair of his dalal in its essence, in reality, he's also recognized its usul, where it's derived from. So no doubt now this is an illustration of absolute knowledge. Naam. Of the hal. Of where they're coming from. Naam. But then what does he say at the end? That this is due to the taqsir. Naam. This is due to the falling short of the rulers. Naam. And it's, this ties in with the first quote that the Sheikh brought. That what, what will bring about islah, and what will bring about nah, rectification, and what, will, what will be a means of seeking the, the, the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is by way of overthrowing rulers and revolution. Nah, what is fully knowing? So the Shaykh, he says, Shaykh Rabi' Hafidahullah, he mentions, Look at Araf al Maududi, Waqi Biladi, Marfa Kamila, Wa'araf al Tariqaha. وعرف المدائر الطيبات والتأثر الأقاعد المسلمين بأقاعد الأسلافهم بل مآسريهم من وثنيين وألقى اللوم على حكام المسلمين في ماضي هيف قصروا في نشر الإسلام وقصروا في مسانده الجهود الفردية في نشر الإسلام وفي تربية الداخلين في الإسلام وكان في هذا الإدراك العميق ما يَحْفَزُوهُ بِكُوَّةِ إِلَى السُّلُوكِ الْمَنَجِ الْأَنْبِيَاءِ فِي دَعْوَةِ إِلَى التَّوْهِيدِ وَإِقْلَاسِ الْعِبَادِ لِلَّهِ وَتَرْكِيدِ عَلَى أَقَادِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ فَعْلًا حَتَّى يَتِمُ إِنْقَاذُهُمْ مِنْ بَرَاثٍ الشِّرْكِ إِنْ حِنْدُوكِ وَالْبُوذِ وَمَا شَابَهُ بَلْ كَانَ عَلَيْهِ إِنْ لَمْ يتزعم دعات التوحيد أن ينا أن يساندهم بكل ما أوتي من قوة بدعوة وتعاليف وتجنيد وأتباعهم في هذا الميدان في هذا الميدان بدل أن يسخر كل طا كل طاقاته هائلة في ميدان سياسية في ميدان السياسة والاقتصاد فلو ماتوا المؤمنين بكل كتبه في السياسة واقتصاد أينقذهم من وثنية التي هم فيها ثم هل ينقذهم من النار نعم صدر الشيخ بيجنس in his رد in his refutation of the speech the previous speech he mentioned so موضودي has a معرفة he knows نعم about the work, the situation of his land. Now, with a complete knowledge. And he knows of his history. And he knows of the relationship that has passed and the effect upon the, upon the creed of the Muslims with the creed of those that have preceded them. Rather, those that are amongst them currently. And still with this, he decides that to place the blame upon the hukam of the Muslim. To, the, to place the blame upon the rulers of the Muslims. By way of his statement that they have fallen short in the spread of Islam. And they have fallen short in their aid extending the aid for those that have efforts in the spread of the Islam and for the short in Islamic cultivation and so even with this absolute understanding he's reached his absolute understanding he did not recognize 
the strength of the manhaj, the strength of the methodology of the prophets, methodology of the prophets in calling to tawheed and ikhlas in ibadah, with all, uh, the ikhlas in ibadah to Allah Azza wa Jal. Naam. And the focus upon the creed of the Muslimin. So that they may be freed and saved from the shirk of Hinduism and the shirk of Buddhism and the shirk of anything that is resembling of that. Now, rather, he did not even make this claim or suggest this. So he makes, he has all of these ta'alif, all of these authorships and compilations in this field. And with all of this compilation and writing and all that he's exerted now in the affair of siyasa, in the affair of politics, in the affair of iqtisad, in the affair of economics. Naam, he has not understood the strength of the da'wah of the Anbiya. He has not understood the strength and the potency of the da'wah of the Anbiya. And the importance of the da'wah of the Anbiya. Naam, and the Shaykh he mentions. So if the believers were to die with all of his books, all of his books in siyasa, all of his books in politics, all of his books in iqtisad, all of his books in economics, would they be freed and saved? From Awathaniya, from idol worship. Now, and would they be free and saved from the na, the punishment of the na? Thumma bi man si yaqim al imam al salih al rashida, wa huwa qad fatah al bab ala masara, masariya li dukhul fi jamaat fi jamaati, wa tamdimi, wa al bab maftu li brayil, bel bil brayilwi. القبور يا الغالي وللرافضي وللديوباندي والسلفي كيف يختلط المرضى بالأصحاء فتكون النتيجة كما هو الواقع أن تتغلب الأمراض فتفتك تراثيمها بالصحاء فعلى أقل تقدير أن تصاب السنتهم وأقلامهم بالشلل عن دعوتي وكتابة في مجال التوحيد والسنة ومحاربة البدع والشرك وذلك من آثار هذا تجميع والمناهج التي وضعت له فهل أمثال هؤلاء سيطهرون الأرض من الفساد ويكيمون النظام الإمام والراشد الصالح ويحققون ما لم يقم به أصحاب محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم بعد خلفاء أربعة وأبناء المحاج وأبناء المحاجرين وأنصار الذين يرى الأسد أو يرى الموضود متابع لألد الأعداء الصحابة ومن ال ومن الحم أن الحكم بعد العثمان وعلي بدأ يقوم على قواعد الجاهلية بدلا من قواعد الإسلام. فإذا كان من رباهم رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم خلفاء الراشدين وصحابته أخر آخرمون قامت حكومتهم على قواعد الجاهلية فماذا ينتظر من جماعة الأخلاط تدم أغراب الاتجاهات وأبعاد عن حد الأنبياء نعم سيد الشيخ يكتنيز بسيد and so he believes as well that by way of this, it will establish an imama of salih, of rectification and guidance. However, he has opened the door to dispute and wrestling amongst themselves. Now, amongst the different jama'ah, the different groups, the different orientations. Why? Because as we mentioned earlier, this affair and this call, if it was to be successful, would leave a vacuum. So he's opened the door now to those of the Brewis. He opened the door to the Brewis. 
who were the extreme grave worshippers. He's opened the door to Rafidi. Now, the Rafidi. He's opened the door to the Diobandi. He's opened the door to the Salafi. Now, he's opened the door to all to seek this leadership. Why? Because by way of this call, and with this call, he is mixing and combining between that which is sick and that which is healthy. Now that which is sick and that which is healthy. And that the affair or the effect and the result of that is that which you find the work that the amrad the sickness the sicknesses will no doubt overcome that which is healthy and that which is correct Naam. and at the very least that which has been afflict afflicted by way of the sickness is their tongues and their pens their tongues and their pens for no doubt by way of their dawah They've opposed the dawah of Tawheed and Sunnah. They've opposed the dawah of Bid'ah and Shirk. They've opposed the dawah warning against Bid'ah and Shirk. And this is from the effects of this dawah of Tajmir bringing everyone together. Naam. And this manhaj that he's placed and he's brought about himself. So, is it, is it possible that the likes of these are able to bring about rectification and purify the earth from the facade? Purify the earth of facade, of corruption. And to establish a righteous and guided leader And to make manifest now, whilst they make manifest, other than that which was established by, by the companions of the Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, after the Khulafa al Arba, the Abna, the sons of the Muhajirin al Nusar. No doubt from some of his followers, Mawdu's followers, will be a'da of the Sahaba, enmity, enemies of the Sahaba, and enemies to the hukum, to the rulership of man and Ali, stating that they, have, they were upon Qawai al Jahliya. <coughs> they built there and established there. Qawaiid upon the Qawaiid of Jahiliyyah. They established their hukam upon the Qawaiid of Jahiliyyah. This is their claims. So if from the individuals that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa cultivated, naam, the companions of man, Ali, from them, and they are Khulafa al-Rashidin, and they are from the noble companions, if in their eyes they have established their hukum, they have established this affair of rulership upon Kawaii of Jahiliya, then what do you believe will happen when you have these groups that have mixed and combined between every different form of orientation? Now, and a further away from the guidance of the, of the Anbiya, what are they going to establish? Well, this is their claim. Their claim is to bring everyone together, no doubt, upon the qawaid of Ikhwan Muslimin. Bring everyone together. The Ghadi al they open the door to everyone. The Ghadi al if the person is brailly, they don't they even give any attention to whether the person is brailly, whether the person is rafidi. Now I'm the rafidi that will speak against the Sahaba. Now the brailly that, in, that indulges in shirk. Now the Diyabandi and the Salafi 
open the door to everyone. So you're saying from amongst these groups, you have the people that will, that will state that the da'wah of Uthman and Ali was built upon the qawail jahiliyyah, built upon principles from jahiliyyah. Now, wa yata billah. And so they're stating this, but they expect that their da'wah, which is far removed from the hadith, from the guidance of the anbiya, will be more successful. Their rulership will be more successful. This is the claim. Now, this is the claim. Allah Ta'ala knows best. But bidni Allah, we'll conclude here. And uh, inshallah Ta'ala continue with the speech of the Shaykh. The Shaykh has some more speech in relation to Mawdudi uh, and his Akhta. Has now a few more pages in relation to these, to these errors. But the general, the general um, discussion here is that he's well aware of the need of the, the people to talk for Tawheed. He's well aware of the tarikh, the history, of where the, these false beliefs have come from. However, he makes his tarqiz, he makes his uh, concentration and his focus upon the affair of siyasa, the affair of politics. And he believes that this will bring about rectification. Well, in reality, it will not bring about the rectification. And this is something where reading through the book from beginning to this point now, it becomes clear, and it's a, it's a continuous pattern of how the Anbiya established the Dawah. Now, how the Anbiya established the Dawah. So when now the Sheikh, Sheikh Rabia is presenting this Kalam of Mawdudi, then it becomes clear from, what, from the, the previous speech of the Sheikh, Naam, that this is the Dawah which is upon Batil. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. So jazakum ala khaira, wa barakallahu fikum. وصلى الله وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم نعم generally speaking you will find that the, um, he had heavily influence upon the Ikhwan al-Muslimin in that in that, that um, in that area of the world so the Ikhwan al-Muslimin the Qawaid were not only specific to Egypt I'm not quite only specific to Egypt. However, these Kawaiid, you find no doubt in uh, uh, the Indian subcontinent as well, India, Pakistan, as well. Um, and so you find groups there that, that still hold on, hold on to to his his uh, his teachings, um, and hold him to high esteem. You find, for example, um, this group they, they have they have some they have some massage in the UK as well, UK Islamic Mission. Now we get Islamic mission. Islamic Forum Europe. Forum Europe, yeah. Islamic Islam Forum Europe. Islamic Forum Europe, IFE. IFE, yeah. Allah Stan. And you find that they love they love letters. They love the letters. Yeah, and they change their names a lot as well. They change their names a lot. Mm. No. It's all following the same thing. They they seek to, to build these groups together and place them together, but they're all upon the same Qawaii. For example, um, the Mu'assis of the Qawaii Muslimin, um, Hassan al-Banna, uh, who's heavily involved in practice of Sufiya. Heavily involved in the practice of Sufiya. However, he saw, the, uh, the, or he saw that the rectification of the Dawah or the rectification of the Muslims will come by bringing everyone together without looking at their beliefs. So they bring everyone together and would not give any real importance to the affair of, wouldn't give any importance to the Aqidah. No. Aqidah was not the, of any real importance. And it was about gathering the numbers. It was about gathering the numbers. And, I, and the reality as well, it wasn't, it wasn't about making the Kenneth of Tawheed al No, making the Kenneth of Tawheed the most high. Rather, it was about seeking leadership, obtaining leadership. And they seek this by way of the tijadin, now the orientation of religion. And we know that it's not about religion because these groups, not only do they, do they not look at the creed of different, different people that make it to sab to Islam, those that subscribe and ascribe to Islam, but they also do not give any importance to the religion of those that don't ascribe to Islam. Naam, and this is why you have this uh, al Adiyan, this this uh, affair of Wihdat al Adiyan, now coming together in cooperation of different religions, 
now. And you find this is something which is becoming more and more prevalent now under the guise of interfaith dialogue. Now, interfaith dialogue. And it's all about seeking leadership position and the likes of that. And after that, you had, from that group, you had Sayyid Khutub. Now, Sayyid Khutub, who sought, no doubt, to... Um, he was still... It was upon the way of the Khwani Muslimin, and he saw... He sought this this uh, affair of Riyasa. However, he didn't. He had a differing. He had a differing in the ideology of attaining that affair. So he still believed in the importance of bringing people together without any without any real look at the creed. However, he he thought that it was more that it could be done more so from the actual directly um, removing of the removal of the rulers. Now, removing of the rulers. I know that this is why you, it came about that he would make takfir of the rulers, he bring about takfir of the rulers, and takfir of the Islamic societies as well. Now, by way of his evil statement that there does not, there, there's not an Islamic society in the world today, and the, and the time when he was living, there's plenty. There's still no, alhamdulillah. So, this is where his da'wah was was sprung from, and then you had individuals such as uh, Salman and all that was suffer Hawali that took took from the teachings of. Sayyid Qutb, and they and they were from the most um, influential of the thinkers that brought this ideology to Saudi Arabia, Naam, and affected the youth of Saudi Arabia at the time, you know, during the 90s. And, um, you know, Asaf is something which is still present amongst some of the the Shabab today, specifically from what I know in Jeddah and places like this, Makkah and Jeddah, where they were Asaf uh, al from from Makkah. And so they thought they saw to implement this affair and bring it into the deen. Um, and no doubt they they did so under the guise of Sunnah. And so the affair became more and more refined over time under the disguise of being upon the Sunnah. Now, and then you find as well that individuals came after them, now, like Adnan Ar'ur. Where he again sought to implement some of the principles of Sayyid Qutb under the guise of Sunnah as well. Naam. Then Abdurrahman Abdul Khaliq. Naam Abdurrahman Abdul Khaliq. Same principles under the guise of Sunnah now. Naam. Bel Salafiyah. Now under the guise of Salafiyah, the mention of Salafiyah. Then Abu Hassan al Ma'arabi. Naam. Inventing principles. Inventing these principles whilst being amongst Ahlul Sunnah, inventing principles whilst being amongst Ahlul Sunnah that opened the doors to more individuals. Naam. And then after him, Ali Hassan Halabi. Naam, again, inventing principles. But this time, inventing principles, a lot of them focusing on the affair of Jarh, criticizing, and seeking to nullify Naam Jarh. To criticize, because if you don't criticize, then what mean? What does that mean? Okay. Doors are open. Everyone's okay. Naam. or seeking to make a complete split between um, Akida and Manhaj. So then, if you make a complete division between Akida and Manhaj, what does a person, what what statement can come or what istilah can come from that? Is that someone is? Salafi in Aqida, i.e. he's Salafi when it comes to Asma wa Sifat. He, he is, he's completely good when it comes to Asma wa Sifat. In Manhaj, he's a bit takfiri. <coughs> Naam. So someone has some affairs of takfir, but because he's Salafi in Manhaj, then it opens the door for cooperation, and it opens the door for ta'awun ala ifni wal udwan. Naam. And then after him, you have his companion, uh, Ibrahim al-Ruhayl. Again, Inventing, inventing principles, bringing about principles that made it or sought to nullify jarh, sought to nullify the affair of hajar, naam, boycotting. For example, you say you cannot boycott, you cannot boycott unless it's for the maslaha of the one that's being boycotted. I'm just about it. If, someone, if you're going to boycott someone, it's for your own benefit as well. Naam, but it says if, if it can only be for the benefit or the one you're boycotting. No doubt, you can, if you're boycotting someone, you hope for good for him as well. You hope that this is a means of him coming to understand. Now, but it's not, only, it's not a condition that he has to be 
or benefit for it. You can do it to, for, your own, for your own good. Naam. Okay, so you see to make principles like this. Naam. And again, when you come up with these principles, you're seeking to make this manhaj wasi afiyah. Then you're accommodating manhaj open for all to um, man, for all to accept and to be upon. And it all comes from the salaf. But they try to make it more and more refined to resemble the sunnah. Now, because now if a person came, Sufi, big turban, my father, he said, let everyone come together. I wasn't accept that. Now, he was not going to accept that. But they wanted to make it more refined and make it appear more knowledge-based. If you want to make it appear more knowledge-based, then you're going to have to make up kawaid. You have to make up principles. Naam, and this is, this is the, the, the essence of shubahat. The essence of shubahat are false affairs that are, trying to, that are seeking to resemble Islamic affairs. Naam. Wala alam. Naam. So similar, so similar to Sayyid Khutub. No. Both. So, so, so they both, they both came at it from a revolutionary um, aspect. Kind of like a vanguard, like certain group of people, you know, like the communists. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So we'll do these more in terms of siyasa entering into siyasa and things like this. So it could was more like takfir, siyasa revolution, but more tak by way of takfir as well. No. No. Um, in regards to what you mentioned, how people take, for example, the head, the Messenger of Allah, no. Um, is there any indication of the Salaf that they would do something like this to the head, and Ayisha, the Messenger of Allah, and the Sibarakah from him? No. So, Funu Sahaba, they, they would do what? Do they know? Union. Or. Wudu. 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 Wudu.
What you're upon is batin, what you're upon is false, and this is why it's false. Naam, this is the haq, and this is why it's the haq. It's like any affair. You present the affair, you present the proof, and bi ta'ala, Allah yafta' alayh. And then he accepts the haq. Allah, Allah Ta'ala grants him success and he, he, he will uh, accept the haq. Again, it's not your responsibility for him to accept the haq. But with this, this, this affair of dialogue and back and forth and whatever else, then you, you know that it becomes uh, problematic. Now, it becomes problematic where there's no, you're not establishing the truth. You're not establishing the truth. Merely mentioning this is what you believe but not asserting, not being assertive and saying that this is the truth, Naam, then this is not something which is, which is, uh, it's just da'wah in accordance to the da'wah of the Anbiya. Perhaps they talk in generalizations of the nation of Islam, for example, mm-hmm. and they didn't negate their belief, but they just talk about madness, for example, or you talk about... Yeah, like Tahir Waitam, Naam. So he, he will give a, a lecture with them and their platform, and not talk about the errors that they're upon. Naam, not talk about the errors that they're upon. And this is the same. It's the same thing as this, this affair of interfaith, where you, you, don't directly, you don't directly deal with the errors and call them to the haq. You have people that are clearly upon Barton and are da'i, that is murid li khair na'am alladhi arad al khair al mad'u the one that was good for the one that he's calling then no doubt he will call him to that which is truth and warn him against any falsehood that he's upon and not give something something which is general that they can both agree upon for whatever reason they see fit Allah Ta'ala knows best. No. So where does uh, the fact that the Prophet used to allow the Christians to worship in their own place, how does that fall into it? And can you best use that against the So you said that they allowed allowed them to? Uh, worship in their, in their place. And their own so you allowed them to worship in their? In their, own place. In their homes. In their homes, yeah. Or in their homes. This is something which is their haq is their home. Now, however, along with that, they have to, they was upon them to pray, to, to pay rather, the jizya. Now, it was upon them to pray the jizya. So it wasn't just an affair of you have complete freedom to do what as you wish. Now, they were restricted. And by way of that restriction, by way of that jizya, is affirmed that this is the haq. If you're upon the haq, Ahlan. If you're not, then this is what you have to pay. <coughs> they weren't given that, that open free reign, as they say. No. Well, yeah. Debates. So debates are to be avoided. Debates. Debate in, 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 this, in this form of asal, the person shouldn't debate. No, we shouldn't debate. That, uh, this from the usul, the sunnah is tarq al khusumat leaving off khusumat, argumentation, and, and debating. However, if you are seeking to make clear an affair of haq to a person, and there may be some form of uh, inad, or there may be some form of taraddud or niza'ad, where they, they disagree. Now, someone may, may not accept the haq straight away. And so there is going to be a degree of disagreeing. Now, however, the person that the da'i, the one that's calling, sees that there, there is a, there's a means or there's some sort of uh, availability of that person to accept the haq. Naam. And it's not merely just to get one over, over, over a person and defeat a person. Naam. Because the haq is not in need of you defeating fulan. Naam. The haq is the haq. It will remain. Its people will remain. So for you to debate to, for merely for the purpose of defeating a person and overcoming him, the haq is not in need of that. You're not in need of that as a person, as a da'i, calling to the haq. Rather, 
if a person now may he may have question he may question what you're saying or he may disagree with what you're saying in the in the beginning, you break down every single thing to him, to that person. He may disagree, you break down it, you break it down to him again, maybe. But you make the affair clear, this is the haq, this is what we believe, this is what Ahlul Sunnah believe, this is what the Muslims believe. If after all of that he's still stubbornly rejecting, then no doubt we leave that person. We don't engage with that person. Naam, it's not, it's not upon us, the person's guidance. However, if they accept it, alhamdulillah. If they don't, alhamdulillah, we've, we've performed the wajib upon us anyway. Naam. So this is, what, this is why, as an asl, we don't debate, we don't seek to just overcome a person. Naam, without any real benefit. Naam. Um, he, in terms of his speech, I don't, uh, it doesn't seem that he's is takfir. Rather, he's using their downfall as a bab, as a means to attack the rulers. So he's using their downfall. And it's something that you see now even. They'll say, look at the state of the people in Palestine, the rulers. Straight away. Look at the state of the people in Syria, the rulers. No. So they use the, they use the plight <coughs> of the general Muslims as a bab, as a means to attack the rulers. No. They use that as a means, only as a means. And then the same thing you see now, we talk about Syria, we talk about Syria, and they use it as a means. However, if you look at the asl of how, this, how, how the fitting occurred there in the first place was by way of people trying to overthrow leaders. Naam, trying to overthrow leaders. And so it's as if the people do not learn or they, they don't recognize. But the reality is when someone has so much love for Riyasa, has so much love for leadership, and they've seen that someone has tried and not only failed, but has brought about catastrophe for their people, by way of their seeking rulership. The one that has that marad, that sickness, that love for leadership so deep within their heart, they will look at that and not see it as a means of I need to change and change my manhaj, but see that I can do it better. That my means of seeking leadership can be better. Not that the manhaj itself was wrong. Naam, and this is a, as a result of having a, a deep-rooted shubha or deep-rooted love for leadership and position within the heart. May Allah protect us from it. Naam. Jazakum na khaira. Barak ala fikum. Wa sallallahu wa barak ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.